o'clock on the Wednesday, which means it's time for... Craig and Ryan's Magic Review Show. I'm Craig. I'm Ryan. Welcome back to another review show right here on Magic TV with myself and the Kid Magician. And we have a bumper show this week. We have five tricks that we're looking at, haven't we? Yes. We've got some good ones, some not so good ones. Uh, we are looking at the latest and greatest magic tricks to hit the market. And we're going to start off right now with a trick that Lloyd Barnes actually brought to my attention on the podcast a couple of weeks ago. And it is... Awesome. Let's have a look at that right now. Okay, so first up we have Awesome, that's A-W-E-S-U-M, Awesome, by Joel Harbors and MagicShop.nl. And this is kind of an interesting concept. We're going to do a full performance. Ryan's going to do a performance of this in a minute. But you basically, this is the prop that you get. You get a two by two Rubik's Cube that's been, it's a really nice cube. It, it, it feels good. It's not like the best quality, but it's not bad. It's a two by two stickless Rubik's Cube with numbers all over it. Numbers literally like it's all over them. Every single surface. Every single surface. But the, the numbers allow you to do some incredible routines. Now we're going to talk through some of the routines you can do with this, but let's start off by giving a full performance of what they consider to be the main routine, which is kind of a weird cross between a card at any number and an open prediction. They call it an any card at any number. It's not really. Uh, it kind of is a card at any number. Um, stroke an open prediction. Yeah. Let's have a look at that right now. Right. I have a pack of cards and a cube here. It's a two by two. Yes, it's a two by two and it's got uh, numbers on. That's weird. 20 mi quintillion million combinations. Not 43 quintillion million because as you know, it's not three by three. No, it's not. Yeah. Okay, so in here we have a pack of cards. This is my prediction card right here. Okay. okay that's the prediction card. Mm -hmm. And then here we have a pack of cards. Okay. And what I want you to do is I want you to take those cards and mix them. Yeah? Mix them up? Yeah. Okay. So I usually have two people, but I only have one. So, so I'm going to have to play the role of two people. Okay. I have shuffled. That's the first packet. I want you to mix them. I'll just okay. Them. No problem. I'm going to mix that as well. Done. Now you take this cube and start to mix it. Okay. Mix it. Yeah. Just mix it. Anyway, anyway at all. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then put it down on the table. I don't have to look away because I'm allowed to see what it is. Okay, yeah. So what we're going to do is, do you want to change your mind? Because that bottom thing right there is going to be yours. You can change it if you want. You can carry on. So whatever time. surface is down towards the ground, I can change? Yes. Do you want to mix it or is that it? You can mix it if you want. Is that it? Yeah. You want to leave it there? Yeah. Any more? Nope. Okay. Is that finally it? Yes. Okay. Now, you know, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the bottom part. So we're going to basically do what we're going to do. We're going to do what we're going to do. Yeah, but this is like an example. So you add these together. So that's... But on my side? Yeah. Okay, so this is an five, example. five. You got another five with four and one. So that's ten. Ten. Twelve. Twelve. So, so that would be do, twelve. You got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12. So that's what you're going to do. But with the other side? Yes. The side I picked? So that is your side right there. Okay, so um, 3 plus 2 is 5, plus 5 is 10, plus 6 is 16. Yes. So, so you 16. Yes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, so that card's been there for the whole time. In that deck for the whole time, and nobody can know what that possible Well, I shuffled it. Yeah. I couldn't... You, you did everything. And that's a completely random number. Yeah, that's a completely random number, because you mixed the cube as well. Yeah, and if I turned it... Out of 23 quintillion million, and you changed it, which makes me... That's wild. 16, but if I turned it once like that, that would be... Completely different. Yeah, it would be. It would be 15. That would be... 15, that, and then again, that, it would be... That would be... 15. So that's... One, so, that's so you add there, and that would uh, 15. be 12... And three, which is 15. Yeah, that and that would have been the three, six, 12. Yes, okay, yeah. So that would have been 12. Now, you know this prediction card's been here the whole time. Eight of diamonds. I got the eight of diamonds. 
Now the card that you picked right here is the Ace of Diamonds. No way! That's a matter, they're all the same. That's cool. But the question is, can you solve this? Yeah. No, you can't. Yeah, can. No, you can't. Yeah, can. No, you can't. Yeah, can. No, you can't. I don't know how to solve a two by two. Well, guess what? What? Do I look because I can? No, you can't. Yeah, I can. 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 No, you can't. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can. You can't. I can. No, you can't. I can. No, you can't. I can. See, you can't. I can. No, you can't. See? You can't. I can. No, you can't. I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can. Then how come it's not solved then? What do you mean? Shut up, Ryland. This is just the best trick ever. Are you yeah. saying that because it's Rubik's Cube and you're fascinated and obsessed with Rubik's Cubes? No. No? Are you sure? Stop doing, <laughs> stop doing quick solves with it. Right, so first of all, what you just saw there... It's pretty much self-working, isn't it? Yeah. Like, like that trick is pretty much self-working. The cube works itself. You don't need to know how to solve a cube like Ryland does. You don't need to know about Rubik's yeah, cubes. You don't have to solve it if you don't want to. No, you don't have to solve it. You don't need to do anything like that. All you have to do is follow the instructions. All you have to do is mix it and never solve it again. It will work. What you just saw work. Now there is a small setup to the deck, but it's a setup that can be done very, very quickly in literally probably about 20 seconds or so. So you can set it up during the course of a routine. Although, to be honest, um, there, is a, there is a small gimmick card in the deck that allows you to do this that you can keep in the deck for any other routines. Yeah. I, however, don't use a gimmick card. It's not card. actually that. It's not really gimmicked. It's not really gimmicked, is it? We can't really say what it is, but it's not really gimmicked. It's not gimmicked. Although the way I do this, if you have got this, the way I do this is I've eliminated any type of gaffing of the card at all. Um, and, and if you've got this, you'll understand what I do. I cull the relevant card to the top of the deck. Then I do an estimated cut of 26. I do a pharaoh check to make sure I'm in the right place. And then I do a reverse double undercut to do the setup. And I just do that yeah. as I'm chatting. Uh, however, the way Ryland did it was with, actually he used a slightly different uh, gimmick to what's described. It doesn't matter. The point is, it, that trick yeah. that you just did is completely self-working yeah. and it's really easy to do. Yeah. Um, there's a bunch of other stuff that you can do with this as well. So, for example... It's not completely self-working. you just got to listen at school. That's all you got to do. Oh, okay. So, there's a little bit in... Not, well, not in that routine. In that routine, there's no mental arithmetic at all. Yeah, in not the in car. that routine, but in some of the routines. In some of the routines, you are needing to do a little bit of mental arithmetic. So, you've just, you've just filmed for your Instagram channel... Yes. A trick with this, haven't you? Yeah. Uh, and the trick that you've filmed for your Instagram channel is you've got your sister to mix up this cube... And you were looked away the entire time and you told her to pick a side and put it down on the table. And then you told her what number that would be on the other side, even though you were looked away the entire time. Yeah. That uses a little bit of mental arithmetic, but nothing too difficult. Um, there's other routines on there as well. Some really nice routines. There's routines where you get somebody to mix it up and, and, and the sides match. The numbers are predicted. A whole bunch of stuff with numbers. To be honest, the main reason people are going to be buying this is for the card at any number because it is really fair yeah. genuinely you can point to them that you can point out that if they've ended up like this for example if they'd have turned it one more time they would have ended up with a completely different number and it is true and it is true it feels really fair and it fooled the pants off you didn't oh, you yeah. you had no idea how it worked no. you were like dad i need to because i saw this before and then showed it you um and the other nice thing about it is it takes up no pocket space it's a two by two, does not take up much space to use at all. You can just put it in your pocket. And if you do do cube manipulation, I genuinely don't know how to solve a, cube, a two by two, you can solve that relatively easily. So you could combine it with Rubik's Cube Magic. They don't talk about that on the project at all. They just talk about how you can use this uh, for demonstrations of predicting numbers, any cards at any numbers. They've got a nice routine with a memorized deck that works really well. You'll understand what I mean if I say three of hearts. And then you think about what that does. And then you think about three of hearts. You'll go, ooh, that's clever. You get what I'm talking about, right? It's really smart. Um, because the other thing is, you can predict the three. I, you haven't looked at the tutorial yet all the way through. But with this, if you think about it, you can predict the three of hearts. So you can get them to mix it up. You can predict the three of hearts. And then you can, you can mix it up again. And you'll be able to know what cards you're going to predict without even looking at the face on the bottom. Yeah, right. So that's really smart. So there's a bunch of stuff you can do with it. It's very, very clever. 
But Ryland, obviously, is a cube guy. I'm not so much, well, I am a cube guy, but I don't even know how to solve a two by two. So can you do, very quickly, you know, like the Tam, Tam, uh, Tam, the Asu, Tamar is a Sui, a Sui, sorry. You know, like the false mixes and stuff that you do with the three by three. Can you do that with that? Can you do like a false mix? So you, you, you could do like yeah. a one-handed solve now or something or a shape solve or... Okay, okay, you can. So you could do like a behind the back yes, thing and yeah. things like that. Oh, right, okay, yeah, so you could. So you can just and literally. And that's that big yellow. It's got that's you. The... Yeah. Just so there you go. You so you could, so, so I understand what you've got here. So you, you could literally, if I wanted to, do that and just solve it, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. Trust me, yes. <laughs> Are you trying to do a throw up solve? No. That's not going to work. Would that work? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not really. Hang on, let me try it. Oh, right, we're going to get on with the review show. Hey, look! Nice. So, uh, what would you give this? I'm giving this... Uh, 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 trick of the Week. Trick of the Week, 100%. Yeah. It takes up no pocket it, space. It's awesome. It is awesome. takes up no pocket space. Doesn't it's true. <laughs> it doesn't require a table. It's easy to do. There's lots of different routines you can do with it. It's, it's literally um, called awesome. It's awesome for a reason. It is awesome. I'm going to hold on to this. He's not going to get it. He's not going to be up. Already got it. Let's move on with the next review, shall we? Yeah. Okay, so the next trick that we've got is eruption. And uh, I'm going to do a performance of this. Before we even talk about what this is, I'm going to do a performance of it so you can see yeah. exactly what it's all about. So here we go. This is eruption. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you something really weird here. This was sent to me by airmail. It was actually sent through the post to me. And when I opened it up, the most amazing thing ever that I actually saw in there. Like, it was incredible. What was it? It was, there were four cards. There were four cards. And one of them, and one of them only, was really special. And I have no idea who sent me this. I've got no idea... I still don't know who sent it me, but it's so bizarre. Shall I tell you why? why? Shall I tell you why it's bizarre? How yeah. many cards are there in the deck of playing cards? 52. There's 52 cards in the deck of cards, isn't there? Yeah. There's picture cards, there's number cards. I want you to imagine you've removed either the pictures or the numbers. Which ones have you removed? The pictures or the numbers? The numbers. Okay, so you've removed the numbers. That leaves you with the pictures, right? Yeah. So I want you to imagine that all the picture cards are on the table. Yeah. And I want you to imagine that you pick up either the black... Uh, well, actually, let's do this. You pick up either the male picture cards or you pick up the female picture cards. The female. You pick up the female picture cards. So there's four female picture cards. Clubs, hearts, babes, diamonds. When I snap my fingers, name one. Hearts. If I told you that in here we had the four queens, would that be good? Yeah. Yeah, well, well I haven't. <laughs> I haven't got the four queens. But there are four cards here. And you're not going to believe this. Do you see that one's blank? Yeah. These four cards are completely blank other than one card and one card only, which is the Queen of Hearts. Oh, and by the way, it's also the only one with a different coloured back. That is the weirdest thing I've ever seen. So there you go. That is a performance of Eruption. I've got to be honest, I don't like this. Yeah. I really, really don't like this. And there's a few reasons that I don't like it. It literally is an Eruption. A, like a bad eruption, like a really bad eruption. <laughs> it's the eruption in Bombay. Okay. Is that's what it is. <laughs> you come up with some weird stuff you do, right? <laughs> okay. Let me explain why I don't like it. So, first of all, the way I performed it is by using a neck provoke down to the queens. You don't have to do that. If you want to, you can literally just put the envelope down and say, name the queen, and the queen they name will be the only one that's turned over. It'll be the only one that's not blank, blah, 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 like you just saw. So, in, a, in essence, it's a little bit like Brainwave. The problem is, this is the most gaffed version of this trick that I've ever seen. For a start, if I was going to perform this, the way that I would perform it is with Inferno by uh, by Joshua J. For me, Inferno you could is do the that without any gimmicks. Yeah. For me, Inferno. You could, you could just um do the stuff that you do all the way to um, the stuff that gets you to that tattoo. Yeah, I know. Yeah. You could but, literally just do that and have blank cards. Yeah. Well, Inferno for me. Uh, sorry, it, it, uh, yeah, Inferno, Joshua Jay's Inferno is a fantastic version of this because, first of all, it's got a cohesive plot that makes sense. 
you know, with the matches and the matchbook and everything and burning the cards and you only saved one and it achieves exactly the same effects. But the problem with this is it is completely and totally gaffed to the hilt and then some and achieves the same thing as Inferno. Yeah. Uh, and Inferno is completely examinable. This is not examinable at all. In fact, I'll tell you right now, there are way more cards in this packet than the spectator is led to believe, which is fine because the way that they've actually been gimmicked, you can't tell that there's more cards, but there are. It also means that from a theatrical point of view, you don't know whether you're going to be pulling the cards out face down or face up. Um, which I think slows the reveal down. It also means that they can't be examined. You can't even take a card out. You know, like if you're doing Twisted Sisters, for example, which is another version of this, which is way better than this, because Twisted Sisters uses two packets, and it feels like the cards are examinable yeah. at the end because they're left with like six blank cards or six jokers that they can examine. Uh, and if you do duality, you can actually have them examined, which was the follow-up to uh, Twisted Sisters. Um, I digress. Um... The, the, the point is, with this, you can't even take the card out. So you can't, like, take the card out and turn it over or anything like that. Literally, all you can do is what you saw in the performance, which is take the packet out and spread them. People can't look at them. They can't touch them. You can't even spread any further than you saw me okay. spread. You can't take anything out. And also, it's discrepant when you turn the packet over and you look at it at the other side and you go, well, it's the only one with the red back. There's a discrepancy there as well. Which I think a... Yeah, it did uh, look strange. Yeah. It did look strange. It didn't look right. Yeah, there's a discrepancy there. And I think it's a discrepancy that people will pick up on. But the main problem yeah, with this... Yeah, I was this, thinking that doesn't look right. Surely that can't be right. But the main problem with this is it can't be examined. Which you could argue, oh, it's not really too much of a problem. But it is a problem when there's versions that do exactly the same trick as this. But can be examined. Completely examinable. Like, and I'm sorry to keep going back to it, but Inferno by Joshua J, Card Shark, Vanishing Ink, that is completely 100% examinable at the end. And everything, you know, you, 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 it's there on the table and you're just, you're just good to go and it all makes sense. So I, I really don't like this. It doesn't add anything to the brainwave plot. It's not like it adds anything from a, from, from a, from a plot point of view. Yeah. It's not like it adds an extra kicker. Four cards, the one they name is the only one that's printed, the other three are blank, and it's ter and it's the only one with a, a different coloured back. Even the card that can't be named by Rick Lax and Penguin Magic is better than this. Now that uses the off by one principle uh, in a packet trick inside an envelope, yeah. but it feels like they have a free choice of any card. Yeah. I, just, I just don't like this. And also, the way that they've treated the cards with what they've treated with is something that I'm actually very, 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 very experienced with. And it's not, it's the way that they've done it, it's not reliable. Uh, I had to retreat the cards myself in order to get them to work like they were meant to work. Um, when they came out the packet, and they even discussed this in the tutorial, they actually say in the tutorial, well, you know, you're going to probably have to redo the cards. Well, if I'm going to have to redo the cards, what am I actually paying for? Um, you could just get the card. You might as well just get the cards and do what you have to do with them. Yeah. I just don't like it. And also, I'm never going to perform this. Yeah. I'm never going to feel confident performing this. I've already got a version of this that I can perform that's better. From a creativity point of view, it's not a giant leap forward in method, in effect, in presentation, you've in anything. With, you got one with this guy, eh? you got one with that guy. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But that's that's like a different thing. I equivoc down to that card completely. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, that's, <laughs> he's right. You know, if you wanted to, you could you could just do... Uh, have you know three blank cards and one queen and literally just equivoke down to the correct queen it's not a difficult thing to do um but ask yourself a question let's use the invisible deck for example if you were going to perform one trick to a spectator and this is something i like to ask myself all the time right and i think this is an important thing to ask yourself when you're putting new magic into your act you need to ask yourself a question how impressive is this compared to something else that's similar to, a, to an audience that you're performing for. So, for example, if I did the invisible deck where I said just name any card and it's the only one turned over in the deck yeah. and then I can turn it over and show it and then I say, look, I've got a brown envelope, name a queen, it's the only one turned... It, it's so much more impressive to a lame person yeah. to do an invisible deck than to do this. Yeah. Like, so much more impressive. It's going into the bottom drawer. No, it's not. It's probably going in the bin. I'm not going to do this. I don't like it. I don't think the cards are very well made. 
Um, and on that queue, Ryland's getting the bin. It, uh, we accumulate so much. We accumulate so much rubbish here, and I know I'm not going to perform it. Are you going to perform it, Ryan? No, I don't think you are. Stick it in the bin for me, buddy. That bin needs getting uh, empty. What are you going to give it? There's I'm going to so give this. Stuff. I know. Oh my god, we still got the milk box in there. I'm going to give this zero percent. We still got the sugar milk box. I know, I know, I know. We don't need it. Zero percent. What are you giving it? Uh, minus. Minus what? Hundred. Minus a hundred. So minus a hundred from Ryland. Zero percent from me. Let's move on with the next trick. Okay, so next up we have Back to Front by Vinny Segu from Neo Magic. You like Vinny, don't you? Yeah. Uh, Vinny gave you a book on maths and magic. Um, this is called Back to Front, Vinny Segu. He's, uh, Neo Magic are getting really well known for making packet tricks. This has gone into Murphy's Magic, so it was available from all good magic dealers. And it says here, four crazy changes. Four blank cards turn into double backed cards before turning into normal four of a kind. And with a magic snap, they all turn blank again. That's the effect. Let me perform it for you. I have thoughts on this, and you have thought. You really like this, don't you? Yeah. Um, and, and I have some reservations. I think it's good, but I have some reservations. But let's do a performance of it first of all so you can see what you guys think. So, Ryan, I'm going to show you something incredible using four playing cards. Yeah. It's called the four card trick. Now, I will tell you that these cards are very special, not on the backs, but on the fronts. You see, they've got blank faces. There's no faces on the cards. Each one of them is blank on the face. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to take two of these blank cards. I'm going to take that one, uh, and I'm going to take this one. Two blank cards, put them on the table, leaving two blank cards here. Now, this is weird. Watch. If I just tap one of these two blank cards to the two on the table, what happens is this card ends up with a back on both sides, and this card ends up with a back on both sides as well. Which is kind of weird. I mean, honestly, I mean, how do you end up with a card like that with a back on both sides? I mean, that's mad, right? So now, if I just leave it for a second, we now end up with four cards. And each one of them has backs on both sides. Now, this is kind of crazy. But my favourite cards are sixes. So if I just do this and this, I can actually print them. So we get one, two, three, four sixes. The strange thing is, it was all an illusion. See, if I take this and flick it, it turns back to blank. And the reason it turns back to blank is because now this card's blank again, this card's blank again, so's this one, so's this one, and we're left with one, two, three, four blank cards. And by the way, this trick is now reset, ready to do again. So you really like this, don't you? You like the yeah. changes and everything, and it's visual and it's eye candy. And, and to be clear... It is a very good packet trick. Yeah. It reminds me of the sort of packet tricks that you got in the late 80s, early 90s, when packet tricks were coming out all of the time and you had Stephen Tucker and Mark Leverage and all of those guys and you'd go to a convention and they'd have a brand new packet trick and you'd get your little Ziploc, uh, your, little, your little bag, your little sandwich bag and it'd have some printed instructions in there. This feels like a throwback to the, to the early 90s in terms of the actual type of trick that it is and there's no denying that there's a lot of changes in there and there's a lot of moments of magic and i'm sure if you bought this and you practiced it and you performed it to real people you'll it would get a good reaction no yeah, i'm yeah. sure you get a good reaction yeah, you'll get a good reaction but here's my problem with it my problem is and this is just maybe my personal opinion and this is something that i've always had a pet hate for um i just think there's an overuse of the frustration counts so I've got the cards for it here because it, inter it is designed as a worker. Like, it is a working trick. And what I mean by that is um, it's, it's, it resets itself instantly. Yeah. It doesn't need a table. You could do the magic in the hands of the spectator if you wanted to. There's a lot of visual moments. It's not that difficult. However, here's, here's my issue with it. So you start off by showing four cards. Um, and then you, you're showing uh, cards that are blank on both sides. And you're using, like, a modified frustration count here whatever you're using a modified frustration count and then you're doing another frustration count in order to put those cards down there it's two frustration counts and then you're saying that card changes and now you're doing another frustration count that three frustration counts then um your uh what you're doing then and then you're doing another frustration count so you're doing another frustration count there that's uh that's another frustration count then after that you're doing an elmsley count uh, like that, and then 
you're finishing off with another frustration count. Right, so there's a whole bunch. That's five. That, five, five frustration counts, right? And then I have to do that's this too. Ten. Now, that's for me, frustration the frustration count six. should never be used as the main six display. Times. I think that the frustration count is best used when it's kind of an offbeat slight, when it's kind of like you're talking and you're just doing a thing and you're not really drawing attention to it. In this routine, like Ryan said, you're using the frustration count for probably 80% of the displays of the cards. Yeah. And I don't think the frustration count is a strong enough slight that it withholds scrutiny being done over and over and over again. I think at some point people are going to realise, hang on a minute, that card's coming from the top, not from the bottom. It it works, like I say, if you do it as an offbeat thing. It can work if you do it as what, like I've got this routine called Mystique and I use it at the very end, at one point in the routine as I'm talking about something else. But I would never use it five times for 80% of the displays. I think that it's discrepant doing it that way. Um, I've got another routine called Blank Nonsense that relies on some uh, frustration counts. But it's not just the frustration counts in there. There's a bunch of other moves and there's buckles and there's uh, quadruple turnovers and stuff as well. This is pretty much all frustration counts. And I think therein lies the problem. Also, the fact that um, the cards can't be examined at all. So at the end of the routine, there's never a clean display. Unless you count the opening display of the cards at the beginning where you show that there's four face down cards, there's no clean display of the faces. There's no moment in the routine where you're showing that you've got four blank cards, which I think for a routine where you're actually printing cards and turning them into double back cards, I think it's a problem that at no point are you actually seeing a display where there's four cards that are yeah. clearly blank. Um, so if anybody said, if you're performing this in the real world and anybody said, hang on a minute, let me look at those cards, you couldn't, they're not examinable. There's also a lot more cards than there should be, which is fine if you're an experienced card handler, but it's something that could make people nervous. And then the other problem is that the tutorial is about 12 minutes, 12 minutes long, which is fine, but in there, he's got to teach an Ascanio spread because uh, when Vinny does it, he does an Ascanio spread as the opening um, display instead of, uh, I'm doing a... Um, a buckle count or whatever. Um, and he's got to teach an Elmsley count. He's got to teach a whole bunch of different stuff. Yeah. And he does that in 12 minutes. And also, it kind of felt like the tutorial could have been shot again. Because multiple times in the tutorial, Vinny's, it's a camera on Vinny's uh, hands and he's explaining it. And he constantly refers to the double-backed card as a double-faced card or a double-blank card. And he has to put text on the screen to go, oh, I mean double-blank or whatever. But it's kind of confusing and it would have been simple to just reshoot it. And also, there should have been a live performance. If you've got the facility, oh, I, was, I was just going to ask that. Is there's there no live performance? performance. And I'm so sorry. And I think Vinny's great. And I think Neo Magic's great. And I think as a company, they're really, really good. Maybe I'd have more confidence in this if I saw a live performance. I can't moan about other companies and not moan about uh, Neo Magic just because I really like Vinny. There's no live performance on yeah. the explanation there should be there should be a performance in a pub in a bar out on the street somewhere of this whole routine in full and yeah. because there's no live performance that's that's an issue for me I, I you know i think that in this day and age you can get a camera you can just go to uh, go out go find somebody film a performance it's going to make the world of difference this. 30%. 30 percent. 30 percent i'm you see I, I i'm giving it 60 and the reason I'm giving it 60 is because it's it's a decent packet trick. Don't get me wrong. It's not a bad packet trick. I just think it's flawed. You know what I think this would have been best at? If you had a project of packet tricks and there was a whole bunch of different routines and you had like a, a download and you had a whole bunch of gaff cards and it taught you six or seven packet tricks and this was one of the six or seven, then I'd be like, wow, that's that's really good value for money because that's great. I'm getting all these packet tricks. But as a standalone product, um, I think it's flawed. And I think really it would have been better to have a, a you know, I, I think it could have been rethought. I think yeah. that the handling could have been better to eliminate some of the frustration count. That's my opinion. Yeah. Uh, doesn't mean I'm right, but that's what I think. Uh, so, Vinny's a great guy. Really you, should, you, you should support him. He's a really good guy. He's got yeah. some amazing material. But I just don't think this is the best thing that Neo Magic has brought out. 
60% from me. 40. 40% from Ryan. So next up, we have Magic Wine Paddle um, by... I don't know, I can't read that. Right, can you read it? No? By Darmagica. Darmagica, something like Dar that. I don't Darmagica. It'll be on the screen. It'll be on the screen. Who cares? Uh, Magic Wine Paddle. This is a paddle routine <laughs> using a bottle of wine and a glass of wine. It's a, it's a paddle routine, basically. Um, I'm going to get Ryan to perform it because... Why not? He likes performing tricks with yeah. alcohol. So he's going <laughs> to... I'm joking. I did make wine appear once. You did make wine appear once, yeah. Uh, Ryan's going to perform it, and then when he's performed it, we'll talk about what we think. Right, I've got, an, I've got a wine glass and a bottle of wine. Yeah. Okay, wine glass. Yeah, wine glass. And a bottle of wine. Yes. Yes, now, watch this magic. What? The wine's gone in the glass. You're too young to drink. Am I? You can't drink that wine. Oh, Spit it out. Okay. <laughs> hey, that's <close>. <laughs> so that is Magic Wine Paddle. I don't know what I think about this. Do you like this? I don't know if I do or not. It's all right, but look, maybe if you're a... I don't know. Like, I love Turbo Stuff. I was going to say, it looks weird carrying this round. It kind of looks weird. But, you know, Turbo Stick, which I love performing with, the one with the stick with the X's yeah, on yeah, it, I... that kind of looks a bit weird. <laughs> but I love it. I love performing with it. I do it all the time. Eric Stevens' Colour color Sticks is one of my favourite routines to perform in the real world. There's a load of paddle routines that I like performing. No smoking. Uh, the one with the lighters works really well. There's a bunch of them. Um, this is just weird. It looks... Oh, um, that one... Uh, the one with all those big lighters... Yeah, that's what I mean. That's called no smoking. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but this is kind of weird. It's like, I don't know how I could justify this if I was at a gig. Hi, ladies and gentlemen, my name's Craig. I'm the magician. I'm going to do a trick for you. Look, I have here a glass of an empty wine glass. And I have here a bottle of wine. Watch carefully. Maybe I could justify it, but I don't think it's the sort of thing that I would actually be able to get away with. You're definitely not going to be able to get away oh, with this because <laughs> you don't even drink. You're not going to walk around going, hi, my name's Ryan and I'm the kid magician. I like wine. Do you like wine? I drink wine every night before bed. So, you know, that's not going to work for you either. It's not going to work for me. And also, I think that it comes back to what I was talking about earlier, right? You know, like when you see a new trick, you have to work out if it's worth going into your act or not the bottom yeah. line is if you've only got to, you know when you're doing close-up magic and you're going up to a group of people how much time do you realistically have per group um like 10 minutes 10 i would say like 5 10 maybe like 12 7, 7 to 12 minutes 7 to 12 minutes so see, 7 to 13 because there we go 3 yeah 3 3 3 Okay, so not much time. Yeah, not much. So if you were going up to a group now, if there was a group standing over there and you were about to stand up and go and perform for them and you were going to do four tricks in a 10-minute set, what would you do right now? That one. Yeah, okay, so you'd do awesome. Could we do stage show? No, you do close up. Um, what would you do? You'd do awesome, you'd do... I'd you do got... Matrix. No, and then I'm... Um, I'd do Matrix. Matrix? Actually, first, so I'll make the coins appear. You'd make the coins appear. Then I'll do the thing where you drop them. Yes, the coins then into I'll the do handkerchief. Three fly. Three fly, yeah. Then I'll do. Um... Matrix. Yeah, Matrix. So you do a coin set. And if I had any more time, I would do um, coins to purse. Coins to purse, okay. <laughs> Very coin centric. At no point. Do I think this would fit into my act? Because, and I don't think it'd fit into your act because you've got so much really good stuff that you could do. Like, you've just taught coins there, but like fiber optics, yeah. ninja rings, yeah. sponge balls, yeah. um, thousands of cube stuff. So much cube stuff. Like, the point is, why would you do that, which is kind of a little bit hokey, when you could do all that other good stuff? So, I, I'm not going to do it. He's not going to do it. I mean, you just saw what the performance is. If you like the idea of doing a paddle, routine with a wine bottle and a, a thing then by all means but it's not for me it's not for him uh i'm gonna give it 20 percent. what about you right yeah 20 yeah. percent it's well made it's well made it, the 
tutorial, which by the way, was one minute, 15 seconds. Wait, what? One minute, 15 seconds. Wait, what? Without live performance? No live performance. <laughs> the tutorial was one minute, 15 <laughs> seconds. 75 seconds. <laughs> yeah, 75 seconds, right. 20% from me. How much from you? 20% from Ryan and 20% from me. <laughs> Not 20, yeah, seriously. What? 75 seconds. 75 seconds. 75 seconds. <laughs> Let's move on. Okay, so the final trick today we have Melt Card by Michael Chatelaine of Gimmick Magic. Uh, a lot of stuff that Michael brings out we like. Uh, a couple of things we haven't been too keen on, but a lot of the stuff we like. Like this. Like this. We love this. This is... I remember seeing this at Magic Live when I went to Vegas. Michael was debuting this at Magic Live, and he had people like David Copperfield coming over and like going, oh, my God, that's really good. And Wait, it was... Well, yeah, seriously. It had, uh, this, this was creating a big buzz at the convention. Everybody was talking about it. Blackpool. No, but Magic Live, Magic oh, Live convention. So I'm going to do a performance of. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to do a performance of it first of all, so you can see exactly what it looks like, and then when I've performed it, we'll talk about what we think. Okay, so I'm going to perform this to the camera. Ryland's here with me. Full disclosure, it doesn't look very good from your side, does it, Ryan? Yeah. But it looks really good from your side, hopefully. So I've got uh, I've got two cards, Ryland. There's no hole in that blue card, is there? It's important that you realise that there's no hole. Is that okay? What's that? A dent. A dent, but no hole. <laughs> Let me show you something incredible. Did that touch water? I guess it did. I'm going to put that right there. Is that fair? Yeah. It's just like this. Now watch all I have to do. And you can see it's really inside. All I have to do is concentrate. And as I concentrate, what happens is that card actually starts penetrating up all on its own. But if I want to snap my fingers, I can actually do this. I can actually have it go right up. Have it go all the way up right there, penetrating right through the playing card and that is melt card yeah. so there you go that is a performance of melt card now this is beautiful this is so good yeah. now you saw me do it with two playing cards which is absolutely fine and that's a viable way of doing it you don't have to do it with two playing cards you can just take a card out of a deck and you can use a borrowed note so you can use a borrowed 20 pound note or a uh, it, it works with polymer i have tried it it's a little bit more awkward but it does work with polymer um, or you can use a receipt which you folded or you can use a playing card like I did yeah. absolutely anything um, what's nice about this is the visual it looks so good you blatantly obviously put one card inside the other card and then it animates and penetrates through and then goes back up it looks fantastic at the end you give them the card bit you give them their bill back or you give them the one card out to examine and it's a very simple matter to switch the card uh, and then you give them the card as well. So it's all really well choreographed. Michael goes through a few different handling ideas, a few different options. He goes through different ways of doing it. There isn't a live performance that I could see, but which is which is which is not good, not good, really not good. However, I can see how this would work in the real world. I can see the misdirection. The one thing I was worried about is the card that you're holding is very gimmicked, and I was worried about and what happens if people want to examine that. But the misdirection is perfect because you give them the card that's penetrated through, which is the one they want to see because they think there's a hole there, or they give them the note that they've penetrated through. As they're examining that, you've got all the time in the world to switch the card. So you just have the card on top of the deck, you bring a deck out, you take one card out, you do the thing, you put it back, and you just do a switch as you give them the thing. Yeah. What do you think of it? I think it's really good. And also... I'm going to give this 100%. Yeah. It's also it's so perfect good. for social media. Yeah. Like, some tricks that are good for social media aren't good for real-life performances. This is one of those tricks that will work in real-life performance. Yeah. But it also will look killer in a social media thing. Yeah. Are you going to put it on your uh, Instagram? Maybe. Maybe means you yes. Never you never know. Yeah, you never um, know. I like this. I I'm really like this. this I'm going to give this 100% as well. It's yeah. As you would expect with Michael, it is very well made. It will last a lifetime as far as I can see. There's no like elastic thread or stuff for it to break. Yeah. Uh, it looks really visual. It's different. It brings something to the table. You just need, all you need to know is how to move yeah. your thumb. <laughs> you just need to know how to move your thumb. Yeah, he's right. It's, it's that easy. You just literally do this and it's done. It's so cool. It's so fun to perform. <laughs> Was that you doing the trick? Was that you? Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's a hundred percent for me. 
It's a hundred percent from me. It's a hundred percent from me. No, that's him. Me, so, me, me, me. Hundred percent from me, yeah. Me, 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 from Ryan. Hundred percent from me. It's been a long day. Um, but I had to sit it's there. It's only two o'clock in the afternoon. I had to. No, it's not. Don't lie. It's bedtime for you in a minute. I had to sit there and watch Thea's Sports Day for like hours. And then in a couple of days' time, I'm going to have to watch your Sports Day for hours. And it was so hot. It was so hot. And I was sitting in that field. Poor Thea must have sweated to death. It was so hot. She was running around. I, but I was sitting on the field and I saw you. Did you? Yeah. And Mummy? Yeah. Awesome. I saw Mummy filming Thea. Awesome. She's going, come on, Thea! <laughs> they don't need to listen about sports day. Should we wrap this up? Yeah. Let's wrap it up. And that's a new movie show in the back. That's a new movie show in the back. I want to see. That's just another movie show in the back. I want to see. <laughs> He's finding this a lot harder to do sitting down. Hang um, on, hang on. I guess another movie show in the back. There you go. He, he, we got complaints from last week's show. We got complaints that you didn't do that on last week's show. That's why you got to do it this week. You've got to do it forever more. When you're 25 years old and you're still doing this review show, I'm going to see you bouncing up and down, talking about being another review show in the back. We can do it together then. Okay, but I'll be like 25. When you, hang on a minute. When you're 25, that's going to be what? Oh my God, 16 years time. I'm going to be 62. Wow, you can still do it. <laughs> I'll still be going strong. I'll still be going strong. <laughs> Boom. You can be you can be out doing all the shows then though. Is that okay with you? Yeah. Cool. Right. As I said last time, he needs more help from Instagram. I do need I do need more help. Will you stop it? I feel like some sad old man <laughs> that you try, please help my dad because he wants Instagram followers. He's only got two thousand followers and it's so upsetting. I'm not that and pathetic. I've got 6, I know you have. You're annoying. Sad times. Sad times. We'll be back <laughs> again. Really we'll be back again next week on the Craig and Ryan Review Show. Don't forget to follow him on Instagram. Also follow him on, on, on YouTube. And also, by the way... It doesn't make sense. You're on TikTok. Wait, what? You didn't even tell me that you went on TikTok. Sorry. You didn't even tell me. I be honest. I was on TikTok. Be honest. Do you know how I found out that you were on TikTok? How? By watching your Instagram and a post went up going... I'm now on TikTok. Now, that post was designed professionally in Photoshop. Be honest, Ryland, did you get Jack from the marketing department to set you up a TikTok account and create you a graphic saying, I'm now on TikTok? No. Ryland? I didn't know I was on TikTok. Like, seriously, you can ask Mummy. She hasn't told me. Neither Jack. You didn't know you were on TikTok? No, Because I didn't know you were on TikTok. So hang on. You and I, neither one of you knew that you were on TikTok, but all of a sudden, now you're on TikTok. Yes, it makes no sense. Well, Whatever. apparently, he's on TikTok. So make sure you follow him on TikTok as well. It doesn't make any sense. You just solve that with one hand. Yeah. We'll be back again next again. week. Next. I'll try it. No, you, no, I'll just walk the house doing this. <laughs> we'll be back. Shut up, I'm trying to wrap this up. We'll be back next week on the Craig and Ryland Review Show. Thanks very much for watching us. I'm Craig. I'm on it. We'll see you again next week. Take care. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.